Gamble's comments tonight, catching up with two fine gentlemen from South Australia. It's probably still afternoon over there. Simon Jones joins me. Simon, firstly, welcome. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, no, it's just six, uh, 7.20 here, so we're in the uh, evening time. But, yeah, great to be with you, Paul. Thank you very much for joining me. And Gary Newton, who's a, a voice that a lot of people will recognise from podcasting and the radio in SA. But uh, the face seems to be hidden a fair bit, Gary, but welcome. Good good head for radio, they tell me, Paul. So, yes, uh, uh, welcome to you too and to Simon. It's uh, good to be here on Campbell's Comments. We are not picking on heads on this show. Heads are sacrosanct. I uh, <laughs> wear a lot of hats for a very good reason. That uh, covers up majority of the majority of the noggin. Guys, we're here to promote um, yearling sales that you guys have got coming up um, in the very near future. Actually, this uh, Sunday afternoon, 12 o'clock, it kicks off. It's called the Silver Solver. This is obviously on Sunday, March 14. Where does the name Solver come from, guys? Well, I can uh, answer that. It's uh, a silver is actually a trophy that they give in golf. Would you believe? I don't know if you're a keen yeah. golfer or not, Paul, or any of your viewers. But uh, uh, it's a plate like the Cox Plate. So um, we're giving away the trophy for the uh, two races: the Phillies race and the Colts and Geldings race. Will be um, a plate, a silver silver, and we've also got a, a couple of mini silvers that um, we're going to give away coming up to the parade on Sunday, which starts at noon, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. That's great. I, 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 I'm big on history and, and the likes. So obviously, it's a name that's been been synonymous with South Australia for a little while, and um, it's just something different as well that, that, that does um, tree, you know, spark a little bit intrigue, which is, which is actually what you guys want. 25 lots in the upcoming sale, guys, but you've got a great array of um, stay-ins. I was, Incredibly surprised when I checked out the online website, a uh, catalogue. Sorry. Yeah, we do. Um, we do, Paul. We've got some great, and I think the the key about it is uh, we've got a lot of first season size that have uh, really taken the world by storm, both in Melbourne, Sydney, and also New Zealand. The horses like uh, Down by the Seaside, Huntsville, um, those sorts of horses. Betting line. Um, he's already up and running as a two-year-old. We've got a couple of betting lines in there, um, and we've got a, we've really got a, uh, something for everyone, Simon, haven't we? Yeah, I'd agree with that. We're, we're pretty blessed this year to have uh, Jeff Eaton in the sale for the. Uh, is it the first time, Gary? We've had him uh, no, he's, he's he sold, sold ma- time anyway. Yeah, yeah, he sold major reason recently, of course, which is uh, yeah, one again at yeah, uh, Gawler the other day on Sunday uh, through right. the sale. So. But, but generally, he's one that, that likes to hang on to them, and uh, there's yes. no surprise why, because they, they, they're winners. Uh, <laughs> Peter Meadows is back again. He's always got you know great great mares and great bloodlines, and yeah, it's very exciting. I think there is something for everyone, um, no matter the budget. So, um, you know, coming off the back of last year's sale, which was, was highly successful, um, I think once again this year it, it offers something for everyone. The sales are up and about, like at the minute, especially um, off the back of Sydney and the APG. Um, the other day in New Zealand, I do some work for the guys at NZB. People are up and about. I mean, yep. th- there's a handful of negative people, which is would be unlike harness racing to have those negative people around. Yep. But majority of the people are up and about and really look forward to these sales. And this one probably has crept up on a few people. And I'm tipping there'd be a few people sit back and they'd say, oh, it's only a South Australian auction. But there's a fair bit of quality involved in this sale, isn't there? Yeah, there certainly is. And, uh, you know, when you go through the go through the catalogue, um, there's seven fillies in the catalogue. Uh, they'll all be eligible to run for $50,000 of the Silver Silver final uh, come 2022. Uh, the Colts and Geldings, um, you know, there's there's a good bunch of Colts. Uh, Simon mentioned Jeff Easton before. He's got four Colts in the sale. Peter Medhurst has four Colts. They're our two biggest breeders here in South Australia. Um, we should also mention Allenby Lodge and Stephen Norman, who uh, stands major secret. Uh, Paul, you remember him, of course. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the great uh, Art Major Stallion that won nearly a million dollars and won just about everything, a, a dual group, uh, one winner. Um, he's got lots in the sale, and uh, yeah, and even a even a horse like uh, Good Time Sammy, which some people might say, oh, you know, but he was unbeaten, uh, uh, son of some beat somewhere, hasn't, um, and his progeny are yet to hit the track, so it'll be good to see how they go. There's a couple of Good Time Sammys in the in the sale as well, so um, yeah, it's a good array, and 
and look, it, it's got to be the best value um, sale and sales race series there is going around in Australia. I mean, we don't race for 200000 but you've got two $50,000 um, finals. And we did that because the vendors said, you know, it's really hard to sell a filly and really hard to put a filly up against a good colt, uh, even though Cretry won the Allwood last year. Um, you know, they said, you know, if you had a, a filly's race, so we divided the, rather than having a group one, we've now got two group two races, which is great. Simon, you, as the auctioneer, you um, have to have a fair eye for each of the horses and have a bit of a look around. There's a couple of Lenny the Sharks. So I, I'm, I'm not sure if you've had a chance yet to actually have a look at them, but actually through the sale of Melbourne, um, they were very, very well received and really likely types. Both, uh, I think there was three of them from memory went through in Melbourne. Um, people commented on how good, and they actually did sell quite good as well on the day. Well, I haven't had a, a good chance to look at all the horses as yet in this year's sale, but, I mean, Lenny the Shark, I mean, he, he was a superstar, wasn't he? And, and he had a heart, well, he had a massive heart, the jobs he had to do to win. So if, he, if, if sort of one-tenth of, of that heart and that ability can, uh, you know, be transferred to his progeny, um, I'm sure you're going to have a nice nice horse on your hands. So there's no surprise uh, there why uh, why he wouldn't be well received. He was an outstanding individual. Uh, would he end up winning with over three million dollars? Yep. Um, mm-hmm. So, and, and you know, I know been talking to a lot of my mate uh, Gallop trainer Lloyd Kennell. He loves the first season size when it comes to um, gallopers. Um, and the good thing I think uh, touching on it, Gary, this year is the quality of broodmare that we've got. Um, yes. You know, it's right up there. There's, you know, winners throughout through all the dams. Um, mm-hmm. Whether it's a good, good boy, Sam, a uh, good uh, time, Sammy, um, yep. or the French, you know, French, from yep. the air, um, or the betting line, the mare, the quality of mares um, that are in the sale. Um, obviously, the dams is, is, is sensational. So I think mm-hmm. that's right for anyone out there uh, in a state or the local buyers. Like they're going to jump on it like they did last year, and it's good to see last year we had some some owners that had returned to the sport. Um, in, I'm speaking of David Chow and, and Joe Carbone, and they've got a pretty smart two-year-old that's uh, had two trial starts. Gary can probably elaborate a bit more on that. He's, he's won both his trials, um, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm told they're going to be back at the sales this year. So, good. you know, it's really good to see those those um, those old faces. Well, I'm not saying they're old, but they are. But uh, <laughs> back at the sales, and, um, you know, and I think that's it. You know, it's, it, 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 it offers something um, for everyone. Um, and, you know, our, our racing, we get a lot of, you know, bad, bad press, not so much from you, um, Paul, but um, about how we're struggling along. But, you know, two fifty thousand dollars races, and I'm sure Gary's going to make an announcement soon um, further to that. Um, you know, it's a good opportunity, you know, four or five grand up to, you know, who knows, 40 or 50, um, yep. and everything in between. It gives you an opportunity, get some mates involved, and, and get along there on Sunday and uh, have a bit of fun. That part yeah, should, that, should be a great day. The part at the bottom is a bit, the key part. Anyone watching this and says, oh, well, I can't afford one on my own, go talk to your mates and then have some fun. Get back out to Globe mm-hmm. Derby. I've been fortunate enough to be there a couple of times. It's, it's a great place. I know there's yeah, negativity around everything you want to say and all the rest, but harness racing at the end of it is fun. The boys were at Birchip on the weekend. It is fun, and rem- you just got to... Be in it to enjoy it and, and go from there. Before we go on too far, Gary, and you've got a few things to say, one that struck me as I was flicking through the catalogue was actually lot number 25. I believe it is a major secret filly. Out of, I think it's bonus life. I um, I should get it up. Yes. But that goes back. Mm-hmm. So from myself, uh, who's been in the industry just a little bit a while, major secret goes back to Larrakia Lady, and the bonus life one goes Correct. goes back to Spring Bonus, a mare that Ronnie Pocock had. That uh, I forget how many she had. I think Gold Share and the likes. It is just a phenomenal family, and it's a filly. So you've got yes. that as a breeding proposition as well as a racing proposition. A horse like that. Exactly, and and I've seen Major Secret. In fact, I bred um, I bred a foal uh, from him um, well last year, and and I've got another colt on the ground this year. Um, he's an outstanding type. You know, he was a very very good racehorse. He he was an outstanding type, and um, for South Australia to get a stallion, a, a dual group one winner that's won nearly a million dollars um, by Art Major out of that family that you mentioned, Paul, the Larrakee Lady family. Um, it is great. And, yeah, you're right. I mean, this filly, um, and she is a nice little filly. And she is, um, yeah, she's, she's got residual value, hasn't she? Is, uh, oh. being out of, well, the third, 
third dam is that spring bonus that you mentioned. Anyone wants to get it started in the industry, that's that's where I'd probably look at it because I can tell you now, you go looking through the trainers, the outbreaks of trainers that have been able to get some of those fillies and breed on and continue to go. People like Mark Thompson and the likes, they continually breed good breeds out of both sides of those families. You know, the Camerons and Gleasons have set themselves up out of that family, uh, the Larrakee Lady family, but the Spring Bonus family is the same thing. They're, they're great foundation fillies that uh, can can definitely set you up for, for, for life. We will get to your announcement in a sec, Gary. The the way the day is going to go on, uh, from 12 o'clock, we are going to have a yearling parade sponsored by High Gain. We must give your sponsors a big rap because, and that's one thing we've got to do in the industry is look after our sponsors and well done to High Gain for getting behind this yearling parade for you guys. Yep. Uh, uh, Martin Connell from High Gain has been great. For, uh, here in South Australia for for everything uh, that we've ever wanted to do. Uh, Harness Racing SA, Botra, of course, um, they've uh, sponsored just about everything that's gone on uh, recently. And, um, yeah, he's he's very approachable. I've done a couple of podcasts with him for, um, you know, about what to look for when feeding brood mares, when feeding yearlings, preparing yearlings for sale. Uh, Martin's uh, always available and High Gain's a great product and they've been very, very supportive of not only South Australian but obviously harness racing right around Australia. And and they're key key to getting these things going. And it's great that they're actually sponsoring the parade. Like a lot of people just take for granted, oh, yeah, we'll sponsor it and all the rest, but they want naming rights to the parade. So I gather the 24 lots, because lot 20's been withdrawn, but the 24 lots will actually parade prior. Will they parade individually, Gary? Is that how it'll work? Uh, yeah, we, we normally parade uh, a few colts together and then a few um, few of the fillies together. Uh, but yeah, they'll be individually. There'll be a commentary on on all the lots as they go round, uh, which is we're using the parade ring at Globe Derby. And um, yeah, Lockie Stace, um, who yep. uh, you know, of, uh, of course our race caller and also does the show with me on a Saturday, he'll be uh, emceeing that parade. And um, yeah, it'll be it'll be good. And I can tell you, I've had a look at uh, all the lots, and there is a couple of very very nice horses. And High Gain have also provided us with uh, ribbons for the winners. Um, there's product High Gain product as well, and um, there's also the best presented um, handler as well. So um, and they'll all get it. And it's interesting because the uh, the ribbons are actually a silver salver as well. So yeah. Very and good. our judge this year, uh, Gary, we better mention Yeah, him, yeah. He won't, uh, he won't, he won't to live it down. Yeah, well, uh, you mentioned his name before. Uh, John Basara has, uh, I rang him on the weekend. Uh, well, actually, I rang him during the week and asked him if he'd, uh, if he'd kindly do it. And uh, John's bought many, many a yearling out of um, yearling sales right around Australia, but uh, particularly here in South Australia. So he knows what he's looking for in a yearling too, as far as type goes. And, um, yeah, it's great to have John on board and um, I'm looking forward to, uh, to catching up with him on Sunday. And I know he's, uh, he's um, chased us up for a, for a catalogue or chased Simon up for a catalogue and um, he's already doing study. Who knows, he might even put his hand up. Well, I was going to ask. He might go into syndicate. I was, I was actually going to ask, yeah. is he likely to put his hand up and buy one or is he the sort of person that a young person could go and ask? what they think of a certain horse as well, like to get a bit of advice. Is he that sort of person that, at the sale complex? Yeah, absolutely. He'd be happy to help anyone. He's been like that all his life and very successful trainer. I grew up with, with him. His, his son's my, uh, my best friend. So John was very dominant through the 80s and 90s and sort of uh, retired now. But uh, he had some really nice horses that he bought through sales in South Australia that, uh, the hand grenade's the one that springs to mind. He won the two-year-old feature. Um, so, um, yeah, he, he's got a good eye for a horse, um, and he'd be happy to, to help out any young person that uh, wasn't quite a fay with, with what to look for. But um, there'll be plenty of good people around on the day too for any newbies that are coming along. Um, just yep. just grab, grab a familiar face if you're not too sure or come and see Gary and myself, and we're only too happy to point you in the right direction. Yeah, exactly, and... Uh... And um, we should mention Aaron Bain's going to be there. He's bringing some of his owners along as well. Aaron's been very successful putting syndicates together, as you know. So um, uh, if you know if you don't want to don't want to buy one yourself, and you're interested in going in a share in one, have a chat have a chat to Aaron because I'm sure he'll uh, hopefully he'll put his hand up and buy one or two. So I, I, yeah, I he did last year. 
He's bought a few over the years. So, and uh, mm. he's doing wonderful things for harness racing. He's, uh, he's, you know, with his syndication, they had a big group. I didn't get to the Gawler Cup yesterday, but they had a big marquee and everything set up yesterday. Certainly um, a great advertisement for harness racing here in South Australia and uh, getting a few winners along the way, which always helps. But, um, yeah, mm. doing doing wonderful things is to be congratulated. And his first one put his hand in his pocket too um, with, with sponsorships. So, um, yeah. Good luck if you you know if you're not sure yeah Aaron I'd yeah, go up and see Aaron he'd be only too happy to help. I will say a, a huge well done to him because I know he's tied up with um, Kate Har- Kate Hargraves and Alex Ashwood as well with that so they sh- yeah. and, and they right. are extremely passionate people as well they get out there and get the their messaging across the same as what uh, um, Aaron does they're young people prepared to have a go so if you're thinking about going you're not sure who to see make sure you rock up and and, and chase him up and um, the way I would see him without knowing him I do know him but not um, intimately I would imagine he'll have his shirt on he'll have branding on he'll have everything saying that yeah. I'm Aaron Bain and uh, yep come and I tell you what, if you're a young person going there, don't look at him and say he's a goose. Get your name on your shirt and get yourself your colours out there and get yourself promoted. It's a way of owners being able to recognise you without even having to go up and see you. So it's, it, it is key. Um, there's another one. Is it Allenby Racing? Is that who I remember as one? Uh, uh, Allenby Lodge. Allenby Lodge, who stand Major Secret. Uh, Steve Norman and his wife, Teresa. Um, they own Allenby Lodge. It's been in the Norman family for years so they stood his great grandfather simon sort of arkin that um something, about, yeah, something about like when that i was born very i think famous, so. very famous name uh, throughout the synonymous of harness racing here in south mm-hmm. australia so um and always presents them sensationally and and plenty of winners out of the barn um so yeah you can't go too too wrong buying an allaby lodge horse that's for sure no that's no that's, and he, that is key. Sorry, I was going to say he's, he's supported the sale by having um, him and his clients have got five um, five lots in the sale as well. So great to see. Yeah. Good on him. Harness yeah, Racing, it. Harness Racing SA are another sponsor as well. And then you've got Sharp um, Energy Hub. I presume it's an electrical uh, group or something to that extent. But uh, they they're one it, of your major is, sponsors. Yes. They they certainly are. They have the naming rights to the Silver Silver. Um, sale and uh, yeah so um, the Sharp Energy Hub uh, they do everything uh, involved with energy and electri- uh, electricians so um, yeah they're the people to see uh, they're on um, oh, Port Road I believe it is um, down at um, uh, what's, um, Severton isn't it Simon um, of course I yeah. believe so just throw me on yeah. the spot but obviously Sharp <laughs> been, uh, been uh, a great supporter of harness racing for many many years and uh, he has shown some, uh, some fairly handy horses um, in the past but uh, yeah without these sponsors things like this just can't get off the ground so um, you know the team you know Gary and, and Leanne have done a, a sensational job but you know, each and every sponsor, whether it be minor or major, you, you just can't run events like this without their support. So it's um, exactly you know, we're, we're very thankful to have uh, uh, have Sharp Energy Hub on board this year. Absolutely, I yeah. couldn't agree more. I think that's one thing that harness racing should do. As I said, these young people, put your name on it, get them sponsored, go and see some of these people high gain and the likes they probably get behind you if you got your shirt done the right way and then you can grow your own brand and your own business and um and well done you go to to get to, your, to the website you go to south australia uh sorry botra dash botra dash yes sa um and then dot com dot au and if you don't type it all in that Correct. way you won't come up because i was three times i had to reload so i wasn't quite sure then you hit, hit. It is a it is a hyphen or a dash. It's not uh, not an underscore that a lot of uh, um, a lot of websites use. So it's Botra sa um, uh, dot com dot au. And then you hit on the bat, the uh, sign that's there in front, the twenty twenty one South Australian Yearling Sale Silver Silver underneath. Hit on that banner, and it'll take you to the online um, catalogs, um, so you can get it online. Um, you can download a PDF, which is terrific as well. And I, I know Simon's got a catalog, so I'm sure that South Australians will be able to get a catalog. But anyone that's watching this, Victoria, Tasmania, even Kiwis, even some guys from America, if they want to get a catalog and have a look at it, South Botra Botra dash. SA 
Have I got it right, Gary? I got myself so confused now. Bot- yeah, yeah, no, you're Bot- right. Botra-sa.com.au uh, and then hit on that silver, silver badge and you'll be able to follow the rest okay. of the links. Yeah. yeah, very easy. So it's pretty simple to go. And we should say also on the day, the parade and uh, the sale will be streamed live on that site as well, on that page. I was so, about to say that, uh, Gary, so you beat me to yeah. it, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you'll be able to see Simon in his glory with his uh, gavel, bringing it down, selling all those lots. So I hope he's dressed. I hope he's dressed. Yeah, I'll be better dressed than tonight. Well, that's good. <laughs> I didn't get the memo. We we're going to be videoing. I thought it was just audio. So. <laughs> that's right, for the Canterbury teacher, anyway, but, uh, that's a good advertisement for them. Generally, when you're in all yeah. your glory, you don't have a lot on. That's all. So anyway, it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll work one way or the other. We're going to highlight a couple of lots um, that you guys have picked out for uh, various reasons, I, I would imagine, Gary and um, or Simon. I'm not sure which one of you guys wants to go first with one of these guys to um, highlight. Yeah, so Lot there five, you go, Gary, Tom. Is that the first lot we wanted to, yep. to highlight? The uh, the roll with Joe out of Kiss Me Monty. Um, yes. Kiss Me Monty, uh, this is one for Jack Panagioto. Uh, prepared by Manny Pasco, uh, does an outstanding job um, each and every year, Manny Pasco, very experienced. So uh, no doubt this colt will look uh, sensational. You've probably already seen him, Gary. And uh, I have, yes. Um, probably just an update which you made me aware of today is the... Um, the, the horse sold through last year's sales had two trials down the mount for, for two wins. Yep. So um, it's up and about two, the two-year-olds. So Kiss Me Monty now has uh, a six to race for four winners. But going mm-hmm. by those couple of trials, which I did some research on, it won't be too far away. Um, that one's called a Better Than a Kiss in the care of Rebecca East. So a uh, very, very good horsewoman, um, Gary. So uh, looking forward, roll with Joe. He doesn't really need an introduction. Plenty of winners all, all around Australia. Obviously, Ignatius, uh, Joe Star of Mia and, and Muscle Factory, probably the, the three best known um, and plenty of uh, winners um, all around the place, um, including, obviously, close to 300 in the USA. So, yeah, really looking forward to this cult. And, uh, obviously, the, the runs are on the board um, on the dam side with uh, plenty of winners, um, starting, you know, going back second dam, third dam, Gary. Yeah, that's right. And, of course, Million Dollar Kiss, of course, um, out of this mare. Um, she won a heat of the year Allwood last year and run third in the final behind Treachery. So she's already group one place. So you can't uh, can't do much better than this. And roll with Joe, Simon and Paul. Um, they're so hard to come by. Yeah, you know, he's um, he hasn't been... Um, the, the greatest um, fertility stallion that uh, we've had here in Australia. but And as um, Simon mentioned, you know, you talk about Ignatius and those sorts of horses by him, they uh, they just get up and run. And, yeah, they're, they're like hen's teeth almost, the, the role with Joe's. So, yeah, so, I'm sure there'll be a few people that'll be after this cult. Simon said there before that um, he doesn't need much introduction. I think he sort of does, Simon, because a lot of people just don't realise how good a job he does do because he doesn't get a lot of fanfare and, and all the rest. So, like, he had a horse go around the Miracle Mile the other night, and, yeah, he was probably well held, but I think the whole field were by a superstar. You know, like, he's, he does a yep. he does a great job role with Joe. When you just stop at and sit back and have a look at the figures, facts and figures, he's doing a very, very good job at stud. Who's going next? How do you used to? We've got a very Toby McKinnon. Toby McKinnon, watch it. If he doesn't watch every show, but he's big on uh, run sheets. You've got to have these run sheets. I fly by the seat of my yes. pants. It's much better, I think. It's, it's much easier. I'm exactly the same, Paul. The run sheet soon goes out the window when something goes. Uh, <laughs> it's like driving in a race. You can have the well best, uh, you know, well laid plan, and then the, 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 the green light goes and things change. So uh, you've just got to play what's in front of you. So, Gary, you can go next, then we can run some sort of uh, order. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Well, <laughs> um, I picked out I picked out uh, Lot 10, which is a rock and roll dance who, of course, is the uh, sire of the fastest um, fastest two-year-old in Australasia, uh, a barroom banter, and uh, out of a mare called Jamaica Run, uh, who was the, uh, the dam of Jumping Jolt. Um, and Jumping Jolt, of course, was a three-year-old of his year here in South Australia. This is from the Medhurst um, lineup of of Colts, he's a lovely Colt. Um, I know Mandy Pascoe's got a big rap on him. She really likes him, and um, yeah, I, when I inspected him the other oh, a couple of weeks ago, he was um, well. There were quite a few standouts, but this fellow was an absolute beauty. And uh, the dancers are getting a really good job done at the moment. I know um, 
talking to Brett Coffey, he he was excited the way they're uh, they're up and running. They uh, took a little while to get rolling, but now he's standing in Australia. I think uh, the Australian broodmare band uh, goes a lot better with rock and roll dance. And there's a couple of them in the sale. The other one's out of Carlisle Queen, which was a Group One winning mayor um, and yeah from a great family as well being prepared by Ray Holbert and for George Smith and uh, he's a nice cult as well so have a look at lot 10 um, and have a look at the other um, rock and roll dance that's in and the probably, sale probably worth noting of the, the four uh, foals uh, the three to race out of Jamaican run that the better two have both been um, cults of gelding so jumping yeah, gelding and country run so this one being yeah. a, a brown cult uh, the filly yeah, that that place they, they have one, but the, the two cult buildings are both race winners. So uh, multiple race winners jumping jolt. What's he won now? Twenty seven, I believe, going by the yeah, country yeah. round five. And you know they've got speed. And, and one thing you you know with a catalogue, you don't even need to look at the breeding when it's got Peter Meadow, uh, the Meadow name alongside it. They they just win. It's as simple as that. And uh, the other, the yeah, other. So the next lot we're uh, hang on, I've hang on one sec. Lot. Hang on, Simon. I'm going to. I'm going to stop you one sec. No, just with the rock and roll dance. If anyone's unsure about those, Brecken Farms, I think they well they put two for the sale this year over at NZB. One was a half brother to King of Swing, and the other was oh, out, yes. and the other was out of a half brother to King of Swing, out of a half sister, sorry, to King of Swing. So they put two in well, five. Like yep. So if you if you saying, oh, I don't know about a rock and roll dance. Well, if the biggest one of the biggest studs in in New Zealand, I must look after my sponsors. Oh, they're on my hat. Woodlands, uh, uh, just just down the just down the road. <laughs> well, don't, the don't worry about that. There's plenty over there. But uh, yeah, they they did this year. I, I highlighted a couple of them, and I think that's a good push for a stadium when when studs like those get behind them. Um, it is a good push, I, I believe. So yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. The, the last one, um, I'm not sure which one you're doing. This, this one intrigues me. Um, a lot of people will be sit up when you uh, produce this uh, little stat, whichever one of you is going to do it. <laughs> so we're we talking now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I've lost my page here now. This is the Grim Premier to Air, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Lot uh, 12, lot number 12. 12. Yep. Now, Gary, if you're telling me this is the last. Grim the last one to go through. through. John Coffey so couldn't believe go. there was one left. So, um, yeah. And this is on account of White Star Lodge, so Shane Loon and his team. Uh, Maria very, Petristovich, yep. Yep, the rear and uh, great supporters of harness racing uh, in South Australia. Very strong Western Australian family line, this, as you, as you go back through the second and third dam. Um, uh, French fashion, she was by Rich and Spoil. She left Style Queen, who we know being placed in the, the graduate pace here. Uh, White Star PJ, who, who won a two-year-old race. So, um, yeah, you know, last they, are, they, are, yep. they, go, they go early, they're up and about early, and then having the group yep. from here to here, um, uh, Bloodline as well, obviously probably needs no introduction to he with Mr. Feelgood and uh, and Smiling Shard, the, the best two that we'd be aware of. But, yeah, this this, uh, this Bay Philly, obviously that residual value as well, moving uh, moving forward, um, really looking forward to her uh, laying eyes on her on, on Saturday. So, Another one we've, we've highlighted, Gary, and uh, anything you wanted to add there? No, other than the fact of, um, you know, as you mentioned, b- being the last uh, grin to go through a sales ring, I think, uh, um, you know, she'll, she'll attract some attention for sure. So, um, And French Fashion has done a good job. Um, she was group placed as well um, in WA. Uh, Rich and Small Broodmares are doing a good job. So, yeah, there's, there's lots of things you like about this filly. And she's a nice filly. I had a, a quick look at her um, at uh, Shana Maria's, and yeah, she she's a uh, a really nice filly. That's what I was going to say just off the photo. When you look at the photo, she's got a bit of leg about her and a nice body, and uh, mm. yeah, she looks nice. I must compliment all three. I was actually going to say when you started with the roll with Joe, I was going to say, well, I'll have a look at him, the rock and roll dance, and even that filly. Well done to the three vendors whose photos we've got up so far um, on there because yep. I think that's key as well. People say it's a disappointing sale, but sometimes you've got to have a little look internally sometimes, but these three horses are a credit to the people presenting them, which is key to uh, you guys having a successful sale, which is what we want. I must say that uh, photo of uh, the grin from ear to ear filly was taken a um, probably three weeks ago too, so uh, you'll see a fair bit of improvement in her when uh, when she steps in the ring in the parade ring on Sunday. Photos are online as well on the catalogue, are they, Gary? You can actually view some of the photos yeah, as yeah, they get updated. You can, uh, 
that's correct. If, if uh, you, when you go online at botra-sa.com.au, um, click on view information. It's got all the. It'll take you to the pedigree page, and there's a photo of all the lots there. Um, and uh, there's uh, some more photos being taken today that no doubt will get up tonight or tomorrow, and uh, they'll all be up well and truly well. Uh, will be up before the sale on Sunday. So have a look at those. Um, Botra-sa.com.au. And as I mentioned, um, it'll be live streamed on that website as well. And that's and that's key. So the sale, the parade starts at 12. How long does the parade go for? Like if, um, And we must say, um, predominantly most of my viewers are Victorian, so we've got to say South Australian time. What do you guys go by? We go by, what are we, is Daylight Eastern State Standard Time or some random thing like that? You guys, Central time, we are. Central? Daylight Central Time, yeah. Very, very good. So half an hour behind for anyone here in Victoria, Sydney, I'm not even going to go with Queensland because I don't think they do daylight savings. It's all too confusing. But anyway, we, we make sure you have a half hour. But just check your times. But So the parade will start at 12. The high game parade starts at 12 o'clock. What time do you anticipate the actual auction starting? Simon? Uh, I think we'd allow probably a bit over an hour for the parade. But, you know, I reckon yeah. if you're turning in from one for the live feed, you're going to be pretty safe. For maybe one fifteen, one thirty. Um we're certainly uh, we're in no hurry there on Sunday, so we'll we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, take our time and make sure every horse gets uh, gets their opportunity uh, through the parade. And once again, once the auction starts, um, anyone that, that tuned in last year with my style, I, I you know I, I take as long as it takes to try and get the best price for the vendor. But also, you know, people are a little bit hesitant. You know, you might be at the end of your your budget, but um, I think uh, we're, we're there to give every uh, horse vendor and, and prepare every opportunity to secure the best price for their horse. Um, so uh, if we're still calling it at midnight, I'd be in what, a bit of trouble. <laughs> but uh, um, certainly uh, turning in at any time, you'll get your opportunity and uh, we'll, we'll try to have as much fun as we can. But um, without those bidders out there, um, there's no show. Um, the vendors have done their job. The preparers are doing their job. I'll do mine. Gary's done his job with his team. Um, but it's up to the, 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 the you know the people now to get out, get your hands up, and um, dig deep because you got two wonderful opportunities there to race for, for good money. Um, and you know you go back through our sales over the last five yep. or six years. There's, there's there's winner after winner. So um, it's a great value sale. And for any Victorians, I encourage you to tune in. And um, you know you're going to grab yourself a bargain. So. Um, you know, it's it's a great opportunity and, and not to be missed. No, actually, um, interesting point there, Paul. Um, Simon mentioned if there's any interstaters that might be interested in purchasing one, um, they can give us a call and uh, we'll gladly take phone bids. We'll, um, you know, if they need some someone to have a look at the horse for them or whatever the case might happen to be, um, they can certainly do that on that website as well. There's um, there's bit of registration forms. You just need to fill one of those out online, get it back to us, and um, we'll gladly give you a call when the when the horse comes in the or is about to come into the ring. So, that, um, Botra Botra dash or hyphen um, sa dot com dot au, and then as I said, follow those banners and follow the links. There's bonuses mm. going with this these races too, isn't there, Gary? Like it's and it's pretty enticing sort of couple of bonuses that have been been touted around. Yeah, there, there certainly is. There's um, some uh, bonuses for SA Bread. Um, so if you come and buy an SA Bread filly or an SA Bread colt, there's a uh, $15,000 bonus being put up by Botra um, for the first filly over the line. So it doesn't necessarily have to win the race. It could run fifth and you get a $15,000 bonus um, uh, along with uh, the... Um, Colts and Geldings as well. So um, one thing also I should mention about the fillies, if you are, as I said, there's only seven fillies in the sale. If you happen to, if you're a South Australian or you happen to have a Samos certificate, uh, Harness Racing SA are honouring those if you buy a filly out of the sale. So, um, And that's up to the value of uh, $1,600. So if you've got three $500 ones, uh, that's $1,500 off the top. They were the breeding certificates that... Um, uh, were given out over the years, and uh, there's still some in circulation, and they've been they've been used in the last few years to buy fillies. So if anyone is interested in buying that uh, major secret uh, bonus uh, 
filly of the of Paul's put his hand on um, up for, then um, yeah, certainly there's if you've got a certificate, you can take whatever the value of the certificate is off the purchase price, which is a great incentive by Harness Racing SA as well. You just left us, Gary. We weren't sure if you were coming back, so I gave you the wave. I wasn't putting the hand up for a bid. I, oh. wasn't, one, I wasn't one of those nervous ones oh. that put the hand up and gone, yes. Oh, no, no. Well, Simon... He's gone, he's gone, gone again. He's a bid for me. I'm going to play devil's advocate. What happens if a filly wins a sale? Does the first colt across the line still get the bonus as well? Um, well, they're separate. Yeah, they're separate uh, races, and there's two bonuses, so... The, um, I think that's the just cult. the butt in there. That's the beauty of it. Yep. You've got two separate races. There's only seven fillies in the sale. So that's, uh, yep. you know, the fillies race of 15,000. Then the first SA bred past the line gets another 15,000. So, and, and mm. same with the, the Colt and Geldings race. So it's, a, yep. it's yeah, well done, Gary, and, and, and everyone behind that. It's, it's well, well, huge. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, it's, uh, uh, sorry, who, just to reiterate, who, who, who put up the extra 15? Who was? Who well, do we well it's, it's, it's a Botra incentive, so Botra, you've got to be a you you've got to be a you've got to be a Botra member. That's the only criteria. Mm-hmm. I think you you're losing my picture. I don't know if you can still hear me, but uh, we can hear yeah, you. yeah. So, um, so the um, Botra's putting Another up the bonuses. I yeah, think yeah, so. Um, Botra have done. Yeah, I think I think what they're doing is great. I think they might have to increase Gary's salary a little bit. He might not be he might be struggling on the power bill by the looks. It keeps dropping in and out. I, I think <laughs> we live oh, the next oh. day. We're always drop out of power. Well, that that is a pretty valid point, actually. Um, I will say well done, and I think it's good. I did a thing with the Tassie guys, Simon. I'm not sure if Gary is still with us or not, but I did one with the ta- uh, South oh, yeah. uh, the. Um, Tassie guys just recently, and the bonuses that each of these states are coming up with is key, isn't it, to be able to building a product and improving a product? Oh, absolutely. And and once again, without Botra, you know, they really are the backbone of our industry here in South Australia, and they uh, they work tirelessly, tirelessly to improve and 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 look after its participants. Um, so if you're not a paid up Botra member. Uh, actually, that reminds me, I've got to pay mine up. So if you've got to pay up, what to remember, Gary, I, I'm sorry I was supposed to do that the other day. Um, you've got to be paid up. So pay up uh, before Sunday. Um, otherwise, uh, you, you know, you won't be eligible for that, that $15,000 bonus. Um, for first pass, the post, SA bred in the in both both uh, divisions of the race. So um, I, I want to reiterate, though, we this sale is only successful for the people that turn up and bid. Um, you know, Two fifty thousand dollar races, they're not to be sneezed at. We all win about prize money here in this state. Um, you know, this is your opportunity. Put your hands in your pocket. You won't be paying the money you would have paid into state at those uh, you know, those highly sought sales. Um, it, it's a great opportunity. I, I bought a, a, a into a horse a few years ago. He he's yet to win, but he will. Uh, he's had a couple of starts for a second. Um, and um, I'm sure we'll see plenty of winners pop up in, in the coming weeks, uh, of, from last year's sale. Um, and you've only got to go back through the history. There's plenty of nice horses being bred here in South Australia and gone through our sales. So uh, great opportunity. Um, I know I sound like a broken record, but we need you there on Sunday, whether it's by uh, telephone or in person, um, and to really make it successful. And, you know, let's reward these vendors for their hard work, and we want them back. We want the Jeff Eastons, the Medhurst, the White Star Lodge, the Allenby Lodge. We want them back each and every year. And if we don't, um, if we can't deliver the results, um, you know, they may look at to go elsewhere. So it's up to us as an industry to put our hand in our pocket. Absolutely. For sure. I don't know. I don't know whether you can. You guys can hear me. I don't think you can see me, but um, definitely can can't. We definitely can't we see can you. Hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happened. There's it's a total blackout, I think. But anyway, um, yeah. Just to reiterate on that, with the bonuses, uh, we really want to. We really want to uh, boost breeding here in South Australia and that's the most important thing that we're all about it's about getting um, you know it's about um, getting foals on the ground and increasing the, the opportunity to breed so um, yeah yeah, which is good so I'm just going to turn the light I can turn the light and otherwise I'm, in, I'm usually left in the dark but anyway oh, yeah. I, I was giggling to myself just then I'm thinking if this auction, if this keeps going we're going to have them both on the dark side the way we're going it's getting darker and darker 
<laughs> Gary has definitely left us for the dark side. There's not an if or but there, that's for sure. But um, I, boys, I totally agree. And I think SA Racing is in an okay enough state. I, I don't care. You've got passionate blokes like yourselves behind that are pushing it, pushing it along. It's key. Anyone that's sitting back there and sitting saying, oh, woe well, is us, how are we going to get over it? Take a leaf out of you boys' books because passion, passion does increase. It, it makes things more positive and get there and be positive about it. And um, I, I think both of you gentlemen's passion is quite genuine. No, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we're, um, we're, we're in it for the long haul and we're in it, we're in it to um, hopefully – Hopefully, you help everybody within the industry because um, you know it's uh, yeah you know it, we we don't race for twenty thousand uh, um, dollars a race, but you know we we, we do breed as uh, Simon says. You know we've got some very nice horses that have come out of this uh, state over the years, and um, yeah, that's what it's all about. We just need to keep keep pushing it and keep pushing it and keep pushing it. And Paul, just on that, um, you know I the job that you you do is absolutely amazing right around the country. I think, uh, you know, anybody who gets into your, um, into your Campbell's comments and some of the other shows that you do, um, you know, harness racing needs something like what you're doing. And, um, you know, you look, that's something that we, we really probably lack here. I mean, uh, we've got the radio show and mobile rolling. We should mention them. They do a great job as well. Um, but yeah, we really do need, that extra uh, oomph to uh, take our product to the people. Absolutely, and um, I do agree, and I don't think it's that hard if I can do it. It's not that hard, I can tell you that much. It's uh, <laughs> it's just, it's not rocket science. The only thing I will say, Gary, is I've, this is the first interview I've done where someone's turned the lights out on me completely, but it's happy to keep talking to me, but just uh, turn the lights out on <laughs> I, I must uh, say. I have no idea what's happened. The, the light's on on my laptop, and... Um, yeah, yeah, there's plenty of power, and yeah, I just got no idea. So, uh, Probably the way I'm dressed tonight, I would have looked better in the dark anyway. So, uh. my, my, pa- my partner just walked in, and the, when she walked in, I uh, I went off the screen. So uh, I don't know what she – maybe she pulled the plug. Maybe she thought I was watching something I shouldn't be, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much. March 14, from 12 o'clock, the yearling parade starts from about 1, one thirty, depending on what time Simon sort of gets himself out of bed and uh, pulls his clobber, yeah, pulls his there. clobber on and uh, all the rest. I'm going to tune in just to see how, how you go about your auctioning skills. Don't you worry about that. Uh, there'll be a few other guys. I'm pretty sure Cam Bray will be tuning in. Don't you worry about that. He's a passionate auctioneer. So I think that's one thing about being online now too, Simon. A lot of auctioneers watch a lot of the, the other guys and uh, check up on their skills, don't they? Yeah, I think so. Obviously, uh, my background's in, in property. Um, but, you know, an auction's an auction. Obviously, it's not hard to call something you're passionate about. We had a lot of fun last year and it was very yeah. well received at the, uh, the auction. Uh, our healing sales. So, um, look, just we re- really my idea is to have a bit of fun, give the vendors every opportunity uh, to get the best price for their um, for their horse. But once again, it, if you don't stick your hand up, it's as good auctioneer or as, as good as the, the colt or the filly looks. Um, There's not much to work with. So, it's, it, once again, it, it's back on the industry participants to, to get involved. It, I, I will keep going over this because it's very important. Uh, a lot of people yep. go to a lot of effort to just get it up and running. And if you want to win, and say we don't, this is up, this opportunity to buy a horse and, and be be in a race of fifty thousand. Get some new owners involved. Yeah, you know, take them through the journey of breaking it in, and it's a great introduction to harness racing for people that have never owned a horse to see a horse's progress. Um, you know, some don't make it to the track, but you know, this 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 catalogue gives you an opportunity. Um, you know, and with the way the racing is here in SA, you're going to get your opportunity to get to the races and, and win a race somewhere along the race. So, um, if you're good enough to make it to the fifty thousand dollar final, well, you know, what a night out! Uh, if you've got a horse racing in a fifty thousand dollar final, um, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. So, once again, anyone listening, watching this, um, get involved. Um, we're here to help. Um, and once again, looking really, really forward to, to Sunday's auction. And share absolutely, it, absolutely. and share the fun too, Simon. That's the one thing about it. That's a correct. Don't yeah. go, don't go there to walk away a millionaire in a few years' time. Go there to have some fun. It's cheap entertainment. You've got something to do when your horses race, and most Saturday nights, Monday afternoons, a little bit of fun once they make the races, and that's what it's all about. It's very, very cheap. Very true. Yep. Yep. 
Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks I, for your thanks, time. I, I will be tuning in. I will be, uh, just for USA guys too, anyone heading to the Mount uh, Gambia, I will be there doing live streaming. Um, I'm not sure what time the first race is going to be. Don't know what time the last race is going to be. And I don't know how the show will go because I'll be with my co-host co, um, host on On Loose Lines, Toby McKinnon, so it could end up anywhere. But any trainer or driver or anyone that wants a bit of promotion and, and people to be able to see them, come along and see us. And um, if we can, we'll get you on the show and give you a bit of a pump up as well. So come up and join us there at uh, Mount Gambier. Looking forward to uh, broadcasting. Can't actually broadcast any of the races. Any, if any of the uh, the hierarchy are still listening to us, uh, I won't be showing any of the races, that, that's for sure. But we'll definitely be talking in depth about them. So a bit of fun we'll be having. Uh, that's on the Saturday night. New boys will be going all day Sunday. So there'll be a lot going on in SA this weekend. For sure. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Thanks boys. Thank you for your support and keep up the good work. Thank you.